Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. I recently took part in my first ever podcast with Ben at Uncharted X and the Brothers of the Serpent, where we commented on Ben's incredible footage of the megalithic stone walls of Sacsayhuaman in Peru. During the podcast we speculated about their age, origins, purpose and so on, all of which is still somewhat of a mystery, but one thing that really stuck in my mind was not just the precision of the stonework, but the shapes of the stones and the patterns they form. Now, archaeological evidence says that this fortress or ancient sacred site of worship was built around 1100 AD, due to the vast amounts of pre-Inca Kilke pottery found in the foundations, as well as radiocarbon dating. Now, as I said in the podcast, I can't really offer any more information or criticism on this interpretation, until I read the reports from the 1940s by John Howland Rowe. He was the man who excavated the site extensively. If it was built then, well, I can live with that. But the main problem I have is that before the Inca arrived, by all accounts there wasn't specifically a large empire or commanding central power in the Cusco Valley. How was the project planned and how did they mobilise the amount of people needed? In the Cusco Valley, before the Inca, the common thought is that there was a period of change, with the end of the Wari culture, followed by an influx of people with different cultural backgrounds moving into the Cusco Valley. This is all because of agriculture. The video that I was shown by Ben really gave me an idea of the size and complexity of Sacsayhuaman. It is made of limestone, so yes, it is easier to carve and shape than harder igneous rocks like granite and andesite, and what we see is not outside of the known capabilities with the tools they had. But how did they move such enormous stones and fit them together? Some of these stones weigh more than 100 tons. Who planned it and oversaw the work and the workforce? It points to there being central power, control and organisation, but this is something that is not thought to have existed until the Inca Empire. We could well be missing a chapter of history. Yes, the Inca could have destroyed or absorbed the earlier culture, and now all that remains of them are these stone structures, as well as what is known as the Kilke Pottery, which does litter the Cusco Valley before the Inca. The Kilke culture also didn't write anything down, which really doesn't help us today, but we do have a feel for the cultures of the Cusco Valley, both Inca and pre-Inca, that they were colourful, powerful and intelligent. Clearly they were also artistic, and there is something about all the structures of this region which makes me think that their layout is not accidental. I don't think that putting these stones together was like a jigsaw puzzle. I believe that there are deliberate shapes encoded into these walls because there is literally no need for some of what we see. For example, there is no logic in creating this shape in this stone, unless it displays cultural art, belief or knowledge. There is no point in making life harder and making this shape an arrangement. Look at this sweeping curve separating the bottom layer of masonry with the one above it. This is there for a reason, it must have meaning. Why did the builders create such a continuous curve, ensuring that 11 or 12 blocks lined up along this plane so precisely? At many places the stones do look haphazard, I mean yes they fit together with incredible accuracy, but the arrangement does look more random. Yet this curve is just one example where it does look deliberate, like it has meaning because they went to some trouble to keep it. The blocks along the curve would not have all naturally lined up along it. They have been shaped accordingly. The builders could have left these blocks more random, like we see at other sites, but they didn't. So why? Whilst writing this, I'm even wondering about something else. Everybody who looks at these structures are looking at the blocks, but should we in fact be tracing the lines as well? Should we be mapping the joints between the blocks and the lines sometimes continuous that these joints make? Is there something encoded into these walls, both in the blocks and the lines, whether art, knowledge, religious belief or all three? 
I'm only considering it because, as I've shown, there is no need to include this in a wall or this. They have included deliberate patterns. And then they also ensure there is a perfect curve that sweeps across around 20 feet of Saxe Horman, and they do this by shaping 11 or 12 blocks accordingly. We can all trace so many shapes in the blocks of both Saxe Horman and also the city of Cusco. And I made a video on this subject in the past. I've linked this below in the description. And of course, many people did think I was seeing things, or looking for things that were not really even there, that I was clutching at straws. But do believe me when I say that I'm as skeptical as anyone. But due to the artistic nature of these Peruvian cultures, I do think there could well be more to these stone walls. As well as looking for shapes made by the rocks, it might also be worth some of my time mapping the lines, including the so-called nubs and scoop marks, and any other strange anomaly we see. We know about the Inca culture from archaeology, the Spanish chronicles and the words of their descendants, and we do know that they did look up into the heavens and see shapes in the night sky. But while so many cultures of the world, and also the people of today, look to the stars, apparently the Inca also saw the darkness, the dark shapes in the band of stars that form the Milky Way. Apparently, the Inca grouped constellations into two different types, luminous and dark. The first was made up of sparkling stars that depicted geometric forms in the sky. These luminous constellations were seen as inanimate. The other kind, the dark blotches of the Milky Way, were considered living forms representing animals the Incas knew. Apparently, the Inca called the Milky Way the Mayu, the life-giving river of the heavens, with its earthly counterpart being the Urubambu River of the Sacred Valley, located north of Cusco. It is very possible that such beliefs predated the Inca Empire. Along the sacred river, we find the megalithic sites of Machu Picchu, Alantitambo and Pizac. Cusco and Sacsayhuaman are located to the south, and looking at the incredible and unusual zigzag northern walls of the Sacsayhuaman fortress, and I wonder if it is somehow indicative of the Urubambu River and the Milky Way. Do these walls have some astronomical and astrological significance? Both the overall shape and size, as well as the detailed patterns of the stonework. I admit that at this stage, my own knowledge is somewhat lacking, and I am on the start of a new journey of discovery. But something about Saxe Horman tells me that this is not a fortress. The city of Cusco is the stronghold of the south, a city with pre-Inca origins. If you wanted to fortify a site, surely you would fortify the city. I think what Saxe Horman could be is a sacred site, a symbolic and important site of worship, spirituality, cosmology and belief. Not just for the Cusco elite, but for the masses that populated the entire Sacred Valley region. This site was carefully constructed for a purpose, with care and also arguably with love. And I think it was made this way for longevity, stability, but also for artistic reasons. Again, whether recording belief or culture or both. Like St Paul's Cathedral in London, it's not just well built, it's also beautiful inside and out. And much of the architectural details and decoration have meaning. I think the same about Saxe Horman, because the site is clearly not made of colossal megalithic blocks purely for structural integrity to protect it against earthquakes. Because, for example, this sweeping curved line in the masonry does not add stability to the structure. If anything, it takes it away. The builders would not have included it if the megalithic style of construction was purely there for structural integrity. A fresh pair of eyes is needed for this site, without any existing bias. I'm no expert in Peruvian history, but I am learning, and I will attempt to review the historic archaeological reports, read the words of the Spanish chroniclers, and look at the physical remains of the Saxe Juan site, and then eventually I'll get there in person to have a look myself. I can also look at the geology in detail. 
I don't think the walls are truly ancient because the limestone isn't showing many millennia of weathering and erosion. But I do think it's possible that the lines and shapes made on the walls could well have conserved the knowledge and beliefs of the people that built it. Maybe they didn't leave us any written record, but maybe these megalithic constructions are a form of writing, pictographic, and maybe it does record the knowledge and beliefs of a lost culture. Years later, the Inca made these terrace walls, but used stones of a different colour to highlight llamas. Maybe they adopted this style from their ancestors. Maybe the builders of Sacsayhuaman did just this, but in a far more sophisticated way. And maybe they painted their walls instead, to highlight the various animals and symbols. And maybe these llama terraces are in fact the key to unravelling the ancient stonework of Cusco and the Sacred Valley. I'll end this video by showing you images of work already done at Sacsayhuaman by the website guiacuscoperu.blogspot.com, which I've linked below in the description. There are clear geometric patterns, sweeping lines, and many animal shapes such as many llamas, cats, and condors. There are also protrusions in the correct places for eyes. Some of the stones that are carved and placed to allow such shapes to be seen are clearly nonsensical. It would be easier not to include them if you are merely building a structure to have integrity in an earthquake zone. Therefore, they must have purpose and meaning. Like how the Inca looked at the Milky Way in two ways, identifying the bright and dark parts as animals and shapes, maybe the structures of Sacsayhuaman have knowledge, art and culture encoded in both the shapes of the stones and also the joints or lines in between. Maybe they knew that their architectural stonework would last much longer than any written record. Maybe the stones were once painted in the bright and vivid colours we would expect from a Peruvian culture. Maybe this was a colourful complex, and every single stone we see did have significance, and also maybe more than one meaning. From an engineering perspective, Sacsayhuaman is impressive, but maybe, just maybe, it is in fact so much more.
thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.